According to Thedrive.com, back in April on 2016, Congress ordered a formal study on the costs and feasibility of restarting F-22 production. The order came amid deteriorating relations with a militarily resurgent Russia and decaying technology supremacy over China's growing military apparatus, and over half a decade after the Raptor line was originally shuttered. The move made big news, and it stood as yet in another indication that what some of us had been saying for years was finally becoming the consensus inside and outside the USAF that production of the world's first fifth-generation superfighter was terminated far too early. As time went by, and the political winds in Washington changed direction, the possibility of a Raptor reprise faded into background as did the pending report. But now, six months after it was due, the study has quietly materialized and nobody gets to read its findings but certain members of Congress. But some details are emerging and they aren't really surprising or too encouraging. Unofficial estimates have varied drastically from relatively affordable to horrendously expensive, on how much it would take to start building F-22s again. Also, false rumors have been rampant that the tooling for the jets, which is supposed to be carefully stored away along with videos on how each part of the Raptor construction process was executed, had been junked. There has also been much speculation as to what a new F-22B would look like and what the jet would be equipped with, but the question of how much money it would take to just get any form of Raptor back into production remained a mystery. Now that mystery is likely solved, yet the USAF won't let the American people see the details. This really isn't too surprising as the USAF and industry will do seemingly anything to keep competition for the ultra-lucrative F-35 program at bay. So deep sixing the F-22 study could very well be just another in a long line of moves to protect the Lockheed's true golden goose. But even with the secrecy, here's what we are finding out, with both Military.com and the Washington Examiner posting similar figures. In many ways this actually beats some cost estimates as far as restarting the production line. And at roughly $200 million per jet. The USAF could buy two F-35s for a single new F-22. But comparing the two is troublesome, as with both jets are in inventory and you don't need anywhere near the numbers of Raptors as you do F-35s. Additionally, buying more F-22s could, and should, mean less F-35s would be required depending on how you look at the USAF's overall force structure. Not just that, but involving other countries in the restart, notably Japan and possibly Australia. These costs to the USAF alone can come down. But the F-22 remains the undisputed air supremacy fighter the world over. It has proven itself invaluable in Syria, and even the USAF has admitted the F-35 has no match for the jet's extreme capabilities for certain key mission sets. But with a new bomber in the works, the need to upgrade or totally replace rapidly aging legacy fighters, as well as a whole other avalanche of priorities that are battling it out over the Pentagon's unpredictably sized piggy bank. Realizing a Raptor production reprise remains just as doubtful as ever. Even the F-22 force the USAF already has is lacking key capabilities due to poor priorities and funding shortfalls. Above all else, not even the manufacturer is interested in executing such a plan as their sights are laser-focused on the much larger and far more lucrative F-35 Pi. This was likely the outcome no matter what the study found, and in all honesty, the USAF would be better off at this point pouring big bucks into advanced unmanned air combat vehicles the same kind of drones technology the force acts as if doesn't exist in an already shuttered manned fighter program. As such, the F-22 will live on as a silver bullet force of around 181 jets, of which only roughly 125 are combat coded, and only about two-thirds of those are ready to fly actual missions at any given time. The aircraft has really become a somewhat depressing, cautionary tale of how clumsy, spastic and nearsighted the Pentagon procurement process can be.